Today we are looking at a case from the mid 19th century. So sit back as we go to the USA. George Sullivan Twitchell was born in 1841 in New York. He was the eldest of four children, born to relatively well-off parents. His father worked as a businessman, while his mother named Emily stayed at home and looked after the house. When George was 11 years old, his mother died. She was only 36, and as his father had young children to bring up, he hired a housekeeper. Young George was sent to expensive schools and received a good education. He was bright and articulate and continued his studies at college in Connecticut. While he was studying, his father acquired a farm in New Jersey near a small village named Carpenter's Landing. This was quite a remote location and consisted of a tavern, about 30 houses and a church. It was a place that was very well known for trading in timber. When George finished his studies, he started to help his father run the farm. He was full of big ideas to make the farm more profitable. And although his father was grateful for his enthusiasm, he was not sure that everything George suggested was what he needed to make the farm a success. The housekeeper was called Camilla. And over the next few months, it became noticeable that young George was paying her very much attention. Although she was somewhat older than him, he seemed to be very taken by her. The couple would often be seen walking together and were usually deep in conversation. Neighbours wondered what the relationship was between young George and the housekeeper. There had been much speculation in the village about her. She was a person who kept herself to herself, always polite, but not someone who would engage in conversation while running errands for Mr Twitchell. Some believed that she had been romantically involved with her employer. There were also rumours that she had a husband before taking up her current position and some doubted that she'd actually obtained a divorce. Young George and Camilla soon gave the residents of Carpenter's Landing something to talk about when they left the village and ran off to New York to get married. They stayed in New York for a while before moving to Philadelphia. When settled, George started a business. Although he was determined to make a success of himself, the business did not prosper. It was eventually closed and George started to consider possible options for his next venture. During this time, Camilla's stepfather died, leaving her mother a widow. Camilla's mother was a charming lady named Mrs. Mary Hill. She had lived for many years in Washington, where she had given birth to her daughter before moving to Philadelphia. Here she had rented a property from a gentleman who worked as a house builder named Samuel Hill. Samuel owned a few properties in the area. He lived at 819 South 9th Street and offered Mary and her daughter a rental property that was adjacent to his own. The two would often speak and after a while became romantically involved. They eventually married and Mrs. Mary Price became Mrs. Mary Hill. Samuel was a wealthy gentleman but lived a very frugal lifestyle, never spending more than he needed to. When he died in 1866, he left a substantial estate. The house that Mrs Hill had shared with her husband was not entirely to her liking. Not much money had been spent on it over the years and she decided to move. She purchased a property on 10th and Pine Street. This residence was quite large, so she asked her daughter and son-in-law to come and live with her. Of course, George and Camilla agreed. Their current financial position was not favourable, so living in a nice house without the burden of paying rent seemed like a very attractive proposition. George continued to explore different business opportunities and started manufacturing wood shingles. These are thin tapered pieces of wood which were mainly used to cover roofs and walls of buildings to protect them from the weather. He had contacts in the timber industry and very much thought that he would be able to turn this venture into a successful business. He opened his operation in Camden, New Jersey. However, this did not prove to be a success. George blamed the failure on his employee, but whatever the reason, he was forced to close a business in early November 1868 due to being unable to pay his debts. Despite George's failure in business, he and his wife Camilla seemed happy 
as did Mrs Hill. The three would often be seen taking a carriage into the city and enjoying the theatre and restaurants. Mrs Hill employed staff to assist her with the running of the house. Although her late husband would only ever spend when he absolutely needed to, she considered that having staff was a necessary expense. The large house, horses and carriages, and the general lifestyle was something that George very much enjoyed. Despite his failed businesses and poor financial position, he was aware that he was probably perceived by others as a wealthy and successful gentleman. On Sunday, November the 22nd, 1868, one of Mrs Hill's servant girls named Sarah Campbell returned to the house after attending church. It was about 9.30 p.m. She was, however, unable to enter as the door was locked. This was strange. She knew that Mrs Hill never went to bed before 10 p.m. and she usually returned at this hour. Mrs Hill always opened the door for her. She continued to ring the bell then patiently waited. She did this a number of times until the door was eventually opened by Mr George Twitchell. It was dark and he did not have a candle. Before he opened the door, he asked who was there and Miss Campbell replied that it was her and that she had just been to church. Mr Twitchell said that he had not seen Mrs Hill and asked if Miss Campbell knew where she might be. She replied that she would go and look and Mr George Twitchell went back upstairs. He was dressed as if he had just got up and looked rather tired. Mr and Mrs Twitchell often retired early, so Miss Campbell did not find it strange that they had already gone to bed. Miss Campbell noticed that the door leading to the back garden was open. There was also no candle or gaslight in the kitchen. It was not usually this dark. There was always light until the last person in the house went to bed. She could see a shape lying motionless on the floor outside. At first, she was unsure what it was and did not want to look any closer. She called for Mr Twitchell. He again made his way downstairs. Together they went into the garden and realised that the figure was in fact Mrs Mary Hill. It looked like she had fallen from the first floor window. Mr Twitchell instructed Miss Campbell to assist him in carrying his mother-in-law into the house. They placed her on the sofa in the kitchen. By this time, Mrs Camilla Twitchell had awoken and came downstairs to see what was causing all the commotion. She entered the kitchen and saw her mother lying on the sofa with her husband leaning over her, washing blood from her face. A doctor was called, but when he arrived, all he could do was certify that Mrs Mary Hill was dead. The noise had alerted the neighbours some of whom came to the house to see what was happening. They were greeted by a very distressed Mrs Twitchell, who announced that her mother had fallen to her death from an upstairs window. The first policeman to arrive was Officer Howard. He noticed that the deceased had received injuries to her head and face. He asked Mrs Twitchell what had happened, and she explained how her mother must have fallen from the window. Officer Howard was not convinced that this was actually what had caused her death and sent for assistance to help investigate the incident. He then asked Mr Twitchell to accompany him to the station. The police searched the property and examined the scene. The house was large. The kitchen and the servants' rooms were on the ground floor. The dining room and lounge were on the first floor, and the bedrooms were on the floors above. Strangely, they found blood on the carpet in the dining room, and when they inspected the lounge, they discovered blood on the carpets and on the windowsill. A closer inspection found blood spots on the door handles, and the poker found in the garden contained a grey hair. This was certainly not consistent with someone falling from an upstairs window. There was a cushion in the lounge that had some blood on it, and it had been torn. The officers thought that this may have been caused by someone attacking Mrs Hill with the poker, and the blows that missed may have landed on the cushion. The police also found blood on Mr Twitchell's shirt, coat and boots. They counted 45 spots on his sleeve and also smudged blood stains on other parts of his clothes. When he was asked how they came to be there, he said that it must have been when he had carried the body from the garden to the kitchen. Mr Twitchell told the police that his mother-in-law would always carry large sums of money on her person. 
usually between two and three thousand dollars. He said that many people knew that she did this. There was, however, no money found when the body was discovered, and Mr. Twitchell believed that a burglar must have committed the crime with the intention of stealing the money, and in a panic, threw Mrs. Hill out of the window. The police, however, did not consider this theory to be very probable, and when they received a report from the coroner indicating that the wounds to Mrs. Hill's head were consistent to being hit with an object such as a poker, they charged Mr. George Twitchell and his wife Camilla with murder. The Twitchells were tried separately. Mr. George Twitchell's trial began first on the 28th of December 1868 and he pleaded not guilty. The prosecution claimed that he had killed his mother-in-law by hitting her with a poker after an argument. He was experiencing very poor financial circumstances and as his wife was the beneficiary of Mrs Hill's property, he would benefit financially from her death. But no one had witnessed the murder and the defence claimed that all the evidence was circumstantial. They put it to the court that as many people knew that Mrs Hill carried large amounts of money on her person, someone could easily have come to the house with the intention of robbing her. This assailant, or assailants, may also have known that on Sunday the staff were away from the property and that Mr and Mrs Twitchell always retired to bed early, meaning that Mrs Hill would be alone in the rest of the house. The servants, Miss Sarah Campbell and Miss Ellen Dolan, both told the court that it was not uncommon for Mr and Mrs Twitchell to go to bed between 7 and 8 p.m. and Mrs Hill would usually stay up reading until after 10. A gentleman who lived close by, named Charles Allgilt, told the court that he was a member of the church choir and that after leaving church on Sunday the 22nd of November, he walked past Mrs Hill's house where he saw two gentlemen leaving the property. One was very tall and wearing a long coat. As it was dark, he was unable to see their faces, but they had definitely left Mrs Hill's house. Dr William Payne testified that in his opinion, all the blood found on George Twitchell's clothing was consistent with someone who had carried a body and then used a wet cloth or handkerchief to wash the blood from the victim. He also said, that if Mrs Hill had been attacked by the poker, there would undoubtedly have been more blood on it when it was found. Other witnesses who knew Mr Twitchell spoke of his good character and pleasant nature. They all said that they had never known him to be violent. The prosecution, however, produced their own medical witnesses who countered the blood evidence, saying that the blood found on the shirt resembled a pattern far more consistent to an attack with a blunt instrument. They also told how some blood and grey hair was found on the poker. They believed that Mrs Hill was murdered after having an argument with her son-in-law about money. He attacked her in the living room and then carried the body to the window and threw it to the garden below before placing a poker outside and opening the doors to the garden to make it look like a robbery. He then went to bed and waited for the servant, Miss Campbell, to return. The prosecution called on a gentleman named Joseph Gilbert to testify. He was a real estate broker who had sold Mrs Hill her property in 1866. He said that he had been approached by Mr Twitchell to put his wife's name on the deed, but he had told him that he would not do this without speaking to Mrs Hill, and when he did, it caused some disagreement between Mrs Hill and Mr Twitchell. He also said that although most people thought that Mr Twitchell had the utmost respect for his mother-in-law, he often referred to her in the most uncomplimentary manner. The defence, however, reminded the court that the death of Mrs Hill would not have benefited Mr and Mrs Twitchell financially, as although Mrs Camilla Twitchell would inherit 10th and Pine Street, all the other properties that Mrs Hill owned were to be passed on to the relatives of her late husband and these properties produced a significant income with which Mrs Hill had supported her daughter and son-in-law. As at the time Mr and Mrs Twitchell were not engaged in any employment, the death of Mrs Hill would only have meant that the Twitchells would have inherited a large house without any means of paying for the cost of running it. When the trial ended, the judge summed up the case 
and the jury was sent out to deliberate. They returned less than 15 minutes later to find the defendant, George Sullivan Twitchell, guilty, and the judge sentenced him to death. The trial of Camilla Twitchell followed, but it was decided that her husband was solely responsible for the crime, and she was judged to be not guilty. George Twitchell's sentence was appealed, and his attorneys also applied for a new trial. However, both of these requests were denied, and his execution was set for the 8th of April 1869. Five days before he was due to be hanged, he made a statement about what had actually happened on the night of Sunday, November the 22nd, 1868. He said that it was in fact his wife Camilla who had killed Mrs Hill. He told of how he had gone to bed while his wife had stayed with her mother. They had an argument and in a rage, Camilla had struck Mrs Hill with a poker and killed her. He agreed to help his wife throw the body out of the window. He said that he thought that she would have confessed, but regrettably, she had not. The statement from George was not looked upon to be credible. On the morning of his execution, Thursday the 8th of April 1869, two guards entered his cell, only to find Mr George Sullivan Twitchell lying dead on the floor. He had taken his own life by drinking water with hydrogen cyanide. It is not known how he managed to get this into his cell. Hello everyone, and thank you so much for listening. As usual, please leave any comments or feedback you may have, and I hope to see you all again in the next brief case. <laughs>